Women's rights in Afghanistan are certainly under attack. After the U.S. withdrew last August and the Taliban became the rulers of the country, most feared for their lives. The U.N. reported more than two million Afghans fled the country within a matter of days. But for those left behind, the Taliban promised to uphold reforms which allowed women to work and get an education. But since then, several directives have been issued directly impacting the lives and dreams of the roughly 19 million women living in Afghanistan. ABC News' Maggie Ruley reports. Streets are empty in Afghanistan as women are slowly disappearing from everyday life. Girls' schools are shut down. Women's faces all but erased. They now walk the streets covered head to toe in burqas, accompanied by a male guardian, a new Taliban decree, a direct attack on women's rights. My father decided that tomorrow his first task will be to buy me a burqa, a burqa that is not part of my culture. Fear of retribution is real here. Taliban rule is punishing and unforgiving. This is what girls and women's lives in Afghanistan have become. This is the shared room of my sister and me. We sleep here and study here, and this is where we are now as we cannot leave home. I had so many dreams to learn so many things at school. I had hoped that I can gain achievements, but the Taliban came and it is no longer possible. We live in a big prison with very restrict rules. We do not want them to leave the country. We want them to serve their own homeland. The Taliban became the rulers of Afghanistan nine months ago after U.S. forces pulled out after a 20-year presence in the country. The Taliban promised to uphold reforms, that girls would still be able to go to school, that they wouldn't erase the progress from the last two decades. But those promises were short-lived. It's now been more than 200 days since the Taliban banned teenage girls from going to school. In recent years, 30 percent of women who attended primary and secondary schools went on to study in universities. And for the first time in decades, a generation of women were granted an education. But now, girls' schools teaching grades 7 through 12 remain closed. Most girls condemned to a life at home. The Rebo sent ABC News this video diary when the Taliban first took over Afghanistan. We used fake names to protect her and others' identity. I go to the university to participate in the future of my country and to have a good job. But now, all my life destroyed. Nine months later, things are deteriorating. I have been forgetting my dreams for months, and I'm looking for a way out of this situation. I see girls around me who have given up and are no longer trying to talk about their rights for safety of their parents and brothers. There's a lot of sadness, you know, suicide rates for girls are through the roof. Women even burning themselves as a suicide methodology and as a way to kind of go out making a statement. That's much more trackable and that rate has increased as well. Bevan Syed Ali is an American who has lived in Afghanistan for the past decade, consulting to NGOs on education, health, and human rights. Nobody, at least I never thought that Afghanistan was a short-term fix. Like any country that is developing, it takes years. Adding to the restrictions on women, girls can no longer see themselves on television. The Taliban recently ordering all news stations to enforce face coverings for female news anchors. The Ministry of Vice and Virtue announced that women presenters must cover their faces with masks as of today, Sunday. The spokesman said this is a final decision and no negotiation or disagreement will be accepted. The order was also sent to our media and we were forced to enforce it. A presenter in a closed environment cannot articulate some words as they have to fluently articulate the news to viewers. At 23 years old, Tahmina Uzmani is the first woman who stepped into a newsroom to be a presenter after the Taliban takeover. Since then, nearly 40% of Afghan media stations have closed, and 80% of women journalists have lost their jobs. The UN reports that more than 2 million people have fled Afghanistan since January 2021. But for those left behind, life has become unimaginable. Afghanistan is facing the worst humanitarian crisis in the world. A staggering 95% of households face food insecurity, with Afghan children starving to death nearly every single day. 700,000 have been displaced due to violence across the country, most of them women and children. And yet, at the top of the Taliban's agenda, restricting the way women live. 
It seems that all political and social problems, insecurities, poverty and hunger in our country are over and now the only problem of the new regime is the type of clothing worn by women and the fear that men will sin because of the hijab. My father and brother will be imprisoned if I don't observe the hijab accepted by Taliban. My house will be marked and my whole family will be harassed because of the kinds of clothes I wear. The life once lived isn't easily forgotten. Sahar is 17 years old. Like most other girls in Afghanistan, she too spends most of her days at home, looking back at what her life used to be. Here are my course books from the school. I have kept my memories safe here. This is how far we have gone with math and English until so the Taliban came and I could not study more. They stopped us here. Experts say barring girls from going to school will have a ripple effect that will likely go far beyond the classroom. Huge numbers of problems come just because of this gap in education. Parents will give their daughters younger and younger in marriage. And of course, this means more maternal mortality, more infant mortality, more malnutrition, higher birth rate. The thing that is more difficult to wrap our minds around, it's the possibility that there is a true ideology out there that believes girls don't have that right. Will we lose girls in the meantime? We will. And while the Taliban can tell women what to wear, restrict access to jobs and education, there are those girls and women who have been impacted by the progress over the last 20 years. And the Taliban isn't winning their hearts or their minds anytime soon. They are remote, remotely tired of all this misery and pain. Isn't it my right to choose my clothes? Do I not have the right to education and improve like other young people in other countries? Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.